Mom, do it with them. Step by step. I learn something new each day. Step by step along my way. Thank you, God, for how I grow. Thank you, God, for things I know. Amen. Amen. What color is your burp? What color is your burp? Blurple. Ah, blurple. <laughs> Say thanks for your patience. Thanks for your patience. What were we doing? Well, we were calling Santa Claus. Did you see Santa Claus, Benny? Mm-hmm. Ah, all right. Very good. Say good morning. Good morning. Say happy Saturday. Happy Saturday. All right. You can head back to your Legos if you want. Ah. Ah. Good morning, everyone. Julie, Lois, Karen. Yeah, they had some fun. We Zoomed with Santa this morning. And so, uh, thanks for your patience. We got a big one today. Micah is our uh, entire chapter of Micah, as we are invited to do once in a while here in Christ in our homes. Good morning, Pastor Heike. Good to see you. So if you want to turn to Micah 2, you've had a little extra 15 minutes or so to find your way to Micah. If you have to remind yourself, maybe read the introduction and hear a little bit about the context and history of Micah. And let's go ahead and read, because this is a longer one. So if you want to read along, uh, go ahead and read along. Otherwise, we will uh, hear this in devotion today. Alas, for those who devise wickedness and evil deeds on their beds, when the morning dawns, they perform it because it is in their power. They covet fields and seize them, houses and take them away. They oppress householder and house, people and their inheritance. Therefore, thus says the Lord, now I am devising against this family an evil from which you cannot remove your necks, and you shall not walk haughtily, for it will be, a, will be an evil time. On that day they shall take up a taunt song against you, and wail and bitter lament, with bitter lamentation, and say, We are utterly ruined. The Lord alters the inheritance of my people, how he removes it from me. Among your cap our captors he parcels out our fields. Therefore you will have no one to cast the line by lot in the assembly of the Lord. Do not preach, thus they preach. One should not preach of such things. Disgrace will not overtake us. Should this be said, O house of Jacob, is the, Lord patience, is the Lord's patience exhausted? Are these his doings? Do not my words do uh, do good to one who walks uprightly. But you rise up against my people as an enemy. You strip the robe from the peaceful, from those who pass by trustingly with no thought of war. The women of my people you drive out from their pleasant houses. From their young children you take away my glory forever. Arise and go, for this is no place to rest because of uncle uh, uncleanness that destroys with a grievous destruction. If someone were to go about uttering empty falsehoods, saying, I will preach to you of wine and strong drink, such a one would be the preacher for this people. <laughs> I will surely gather all of you, O Jacob. I will gather the survivors of Israel. I will set them together like sheep in a fold, like a flock in its pasture. It will resound with people. The one who breaks out will go f up before them. They will break through and pass the gate, going out by it. Their king will pass on before them, the Lord at their head. Hey, we did it. We read a whole chapter together. Good morning, Carol. Good morning, Florence. Carol, I understand it's cold up in Minnesota. That's what my sister said there. No snow, but cold. So stay warm. Safe in God's Fold is our devotion title from Christ in Our Home today, uh, here on the 28th day of November. I will gather the survivors of Israel. I will set them together like sheep in a fold, is the invitation to focus on that 12th verse of our reading. God's creatures have a varied means of protection. Shepherds often keep a special breed of dog with the sheep to ward off predators. When Jesus compared God's people to sheep and himself to a shepherd, he used an age-old metaphor of Israel as God's flock. 
Such imagery is common in Psalms and Isaiah. Here, Micah uses it too. A professor of mine once remarked that, like sheep, we tend to nibble ourselves lost. <laughs> in the freedom God allows, we take chances that often result in tragedy. Ancient Israel did so time and again, eventually nibbling their way into idol worship and dependencies on rulers who cared nothing about them until they were captured by Assyria and Babylon. Again, you may have read about that in the introduction to Micah there in your preparation or perhaps later today. But God has always been the good shepherd, and through Micah, God promised to gather like a flock the people who had strayed and fallen among predatory leaders. Some 500 years on, Jesus took up the shepherd's crook to ward off the predator predatory powers of sin and death. We sheep are safe. An invitation to pray together this morning. Good Shepherd, may I always know your voice and follow where you lead. Amen. And a prayer concern for this Saturday that as it unfolds before us would be modern day shepherds. Uh, so be invited to pray for those modern day shepherds. We'll uh, gather here for worship on what is now the fifth Sunday isn't it? Of Advent for our expanded Advent. Maybe it's the fourth. I think it might be the fourth Sunday of Advent for uh, us in our extended Advent at Cross of Hope. The first Sunday of Advent for those of you who are joining us from uh, elsewhere. Uh, but we'll worship on our digital channels here at 9 a.m. tomorrow, and we'll look forward to that. Uh, as December unfolds, we've got a whole lot of things cooking as we head here through Advent, including hopefully a Las Posadas and uh, something to stop by the church and gather up for. Four, Lois, thank you. That's what happens when I plan so far ahead. I never remember which one we're on. So thank you very much, my friends. It's a blessing to spend some time together uh, here, grace upon grace upon grace, as we continue on sharing this journey together safely from our homes, connecting as we are able. You are a blessing and a light in my life as you bear God's uh, love and light for me and my family. Thanks so much, and we'll worship together tomorrow at 9. We'll have walk-up communion between 10 and 11 if you want to come just for a brief time of community and sharing the Lord's Supper. Be invited to do so, uh, and blessings as our journey continues, dear friends.